today we are going to learn about visual system and optic nerve in this session we are dealing the introduction parts neural pathway for vision and clinical significance the vision or sight it is the most important special sense in humans the visual system transmits the sense of vision from a retina of eyeball to the visual cortex the following are the part of a visual system the retina optic nerve optic chiasma optic tract lateral geniculate body optic radiation or geniculocalcarine tract and the visual cortex first we are going to learn about the retina the retina forms the inner photosensitive coat of eyeball it consists of two layers an inner neural layer and an outer layer of pigment epithelium in inner neural layer contain three basic layers of cells an outer layer of rod and cone cells a middle layer of bipolar cells an inner layer of ganglion cells the other cells are association neurons and neuroglial cells first the rod and cone cells the rod and cone cells around 150 millions in number they are modified neurons and serves as photoreceptors both consist of an outer and inner portions the former being the light sensitive and contain photo pigments rhodopsin in the case of rods and iodopsin in case of cones which convert the stimulus of light into nerve impulses the outer portion is rod shaped it in case of rods and cone shape in case of cones hence the name rod and cone cells the cone cells respond better to the bright light and are responsible for visual acuity and color vision they are most numerous in central region of the retina the rods on the other hand predominate in peripheral part of a retina they respond to poor light and are important for peripheral vision next the bipolar cells the bipolar cells are bipolar neurons they interpose between the photoreceptor cells and ganglion cells next the ganglion cells the ganglion cells are large multipolar neurons forming the last retinal link in the visual pathway the axons of ganglion cells forms a layer of nerve fibers adjacent to the vitreous humor these fibers converge towards the round area or our optic disc from all direction where they pierce the choroid and sclera about 3 to 4 mm to the nasal side of the posterior pole of eyeball and constitute the optic nerve the optic disc it is about 1.5 mm in diameter and it is slightly medial to the posterior pole it is insensitive to light as it has no sensory receptors so it is called as the blind spot it represents the point of exit of optic nerve fibers its central part is pierced by central artery of retina and tributaries of central veins of retina next the macula lutea it is a yellowish oval shaped area of about 6 mm in diameter nearer the center of posterior part of retina there is a small depression in the center of macula lutea is called as fovea centralis the fovea is about 1.5 mm in diameter and it is separated from 
edge of optic disc by a distance of 3 mm. The visual acuity is maximum at this fovea. That is, the clearest vision occurs here. The fovea is believed to contain only cone receptors. The pigment epithelium. The pigment epithelium consists of a single layer of cells containing melanin pigment. The pigment epithelium reinforces the light absorbing proportion of the choroid to reduce the scattering of light within the eye. The visual field and retinal quadrants. When sun looks straight ahead with eye fixed, that part external world which can be seen with each eye is called as visual field of the eye. Thus it is the area within which an object can be seen while the eye fixes on the spot of light or object. Laterally it extends up to 104 degree and on the nasal side 65 degrees. In front there is a cone shaped area in which the visual field of two eyes overlap. Therefore, an area seen by one eye and that seen by both eyes is more or less same except a small area that can be seen only by the eyes of that particular side. For the sake of convenience of description, the visual field is conventionally divided into right and left halves. Each half is further divided into upper and lower half so that the visual field is described to consist of four quadrants. The light rays can be enters the eyes only through the pupil and since they travel in straight lines it is obvious that objects of temporal field of vision are perceived by the nasal half of retina, whereas those in the nasal half are perceived by the temporal half of the retina. The central projections of retinal areas. The fibers from right half of two retinae terminate in the right lateral geniculate body and those from left half terminates in the left lateral geniculate body. The visual information from lateral geniculate body of each side is relayed in the visual cortex of the corresponding side. Next we are going to learn about optic nerve, optic chiasma and optic tract. The optic nerve comes out by piercing the sclera 3 mm medial to the posterior pole of eyeball. In man, it contains about 1 million of fibers, which are the axons of ganglion cells of retina. It passes through the optic canal to reach the middle cranial fossa, where it is approaches and joins its counterpart of other side to form the optic chiasma above the roof of pituitary fossa. Posteriorly, the chiasma divides into two optical tracts, which after winding round the cerebral pedangle ends in the lateral geniculate body of corresponding sides. The optic nerve is about 4 cm length. Throughout its course, the nerve is surrounded by extension of meninges. The meninges extension around the nerve fuses with the scleral cord of eyeball. Next, the lateral geniculate body. The lateral geniculate body is a small ovoid prominence visible at the terminal end of optic tract. Afferent connections of lateral geniculate body. The lateral root of the optic tract consisting of most of the retinal fibers of both eyes, the temporal fibers of the same side and the nasal fibers of opposite side. Then the efferent fibers. 
the geniculocalcarine fibers projects as an optic radiation through retro lentiform part of internal capsule to the visual cortex of occipital lobe area number 17 18 and 19 next the optic radiation or geniculocalcarine tract the fibers arising from cells of lateral geniculate body and constitute the geniculocalcarine tract the first these fibers passes through the retrolendiform part of internal capsules then they fan out to form the optic radiation which ends in the visual cortex area number 17 18 19 in the occipital lobe next the visual cortex the visual cortex is comprises of primary visual area and the secondary visual area the primary visual area or area number 17 or broadman's area number 70 primary visual area which is situated in the wall and the floor of posterior part of calcarine sulcus or post calcarine sulcus and may extends around the occipital pole on the suprolateral surface of cerebral hemisphere the visual cortex receives afferent fibers from lateral geniculate body via the geniculocalcarine tract the visual cortex receives fibers from temporal half of the ipsilateral retina and nasal half of contralateral retina the primary visual area is concerned with the reception and perceptions of isolated visual impressions like color size form motion illumination and transparency next the secondary visual area or visual association area broadman's area number 18 and 90 the secondary visual area are surrounded the primary visual area and occupy most of the remaining visual cortex on the medial and supralateral surface of cerebral hemisphere this area receives afferent fibers from primary visual area it relates the visual information received from primary visual area to the past visual experiences thus establishing the individual to recognize and appreciate what he is seeing in other words the secondary visual area is responsible for recognizing of the objects seen the neural pathway for vision the neural pathway of vision is three order neuronal pathway the first order sensory neurons carrying visual sensations from the bipolar cells of a retina their dendrites synapse with photoreceptors and axons with the dendrites of ganglion cells the second order sensory neurons are the multipolar neurons the axons runs along the optic nerve to the optic chiasma where fibers from nasal half of retina cross to the opposite side and travel through the opposite optic tract to terminate in the opposite lateral geniculate body the fibers from the temporal half remain uncrossed to the optic chiasma and run in optic side to terminate in the ipsilateral geniculate body the fibers from macula lutea behave in the exactly same manner the cell bodies of third order neurons or tertiary neurons are located in the lateral geniculate body their axons form the optic radiations which projects into the visual cortex the blindness is conventionally described with a reference to the field of vision rather than with a reference to the part of retina the loss of vision in one half of the visual field right or left half it is termed as hemianopia if the same half of visual field are affected in both side it is called as homonymous hemianopia on other hand if different half of visual field are affected th then it is called as 
heteronymous hemianopia injury of optic nerve of one side will result the total blindness in the eye of that side the damage of central part of the optic chiasma interrupts the crossing fibers from the nasal half of two retinae and result bitemporal heteronymous hemianopia or the tunnel vision destruction of lateral part of optic chiasma on one side that produces unilateral nasal hemianopia on one side of that lesion the complete destruction of optic tract or geniculocalcarine tract on one side result in the blindness of opposite half of the nasal field this type of defect it is called as right or left homonymous hemianopia the lesion involving visual cortex produces blindness in opposite half of visual field it is called as homonymous hemianopia with sparing of macular vision destruction of upper tip of calcarine sulcus on one side produces visual loss in lower quadrant of opposite visual field it is called as contralateral inferior quadratic anopia destruction of lower tip of the calcarine sulcus on one side produces visual loss in superior quadrant of opposite visual field it is called as contralateral superior quadratic anopia